good morning guys so today is sunday and i have decided to treat the family with my specialty chapatis so today i'm gonna be making some chapatis with maybe lentils or maybe beans and cabbage we'll see but um yeah so i have water some warm water there i have salt i have sugar i have this almost done flour and i have a new one that i just opened right here i am gonna be mixing that together and make the dough for the chapatis all right so first things first i'm gonna add some salt to taste so my niece just came to help me uh, prep the dough and she also wanted to learn how I normally make it. And I think at this point, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, I think you're really, really missing out. So go ahead and press that subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell to be notified every time I post. Okay guys, so after a very nice walk of the land, I'm back in the kitchen, just rolling this into small balls to start making the chapatis looks like that so cut it and iron them here So guys, we're done making the chapatis. I'm just going to be making the lentil stew, which is going to be accompanying the chapatis. And right here, this is the actual uh, way of cooking in the village. We'll normally use a stove or um, we like to call it a jiko, the one you use charcoal. But I'm going to be using the original uh, method of cooking. And these lentils here are already boiled. I'm just going to go ahead and cut up the onions, add in the tomatoes and a few spices, and then add the lentils to cook them down and then they'll be ready for dinner with the chapatis. Mm -hmm. So guys, this is called a tarimbo in our, our language. Okay, uh, my grandma one. taught me how to use it when I was young and I think it's still the same method they use until to date to normally when the fire is down, you just blow some air into it and the fire comes right back up. The only problem I was having is the smoke. There was way too much smoke cooking in this kitchen but i think as time goes by you just get used to it because there's no other way you have to survive using the same same method but um that's one of the way if you want your fire to keep going and the faster you can finish cooking that you can use i was already struggling with the smoke but the food had to be made so i was cooking in sessions of going in and out of the kitchen to get some fresh air and then come back in and continue cooking but at the end the plant is turned out pretty good Well, 
so guys i'm done making this amazing lentil so what i'm doing next now is getting the kale from the farm and i am going to be getting it with my niece who is going to help me cut it up later to make food now the thing is in the village is like when you're eating things like rice lentils all this light stuff is like having a snack but a meal is not done without ugali so what i did is um so what i'm doing actually is we're getting skooma and then we're gonna cut it up and then have it with ugali for dinner for our elders and the rest of us can just have chapati and lentils because sometimes we don't like the heavy food so i like this one so much because it's all fresh planted by us no chemicals added everything is organic <laughs> Original fresh kill. Original fresh kill. Go to share my life. Cause he chase anybody. Jesus. guys welcome back so most of my video i'm not really talking i am doing most of videoing but i just wanted to show you guys a little bit of something that i found out anyway uh here i got five of these they're normally packed like that i got this for less than a dollar which is not normally what happens when we're buying it in our stores and then i got these onions like this how much were they? Whoopsie. They were 50 -ish. Yeah, less than a dollar. It's like 50 cents or something like that. And then these avocados are the original main sweet ones, creamy ones. But these ones, we got them from our cousin. Cousin. We got a lot of them uh, for free. <laughs> but normally, one of these will go for 10 shillings, which is like 10 cents, right? Something like that, like 10 cents. And then I got two of these for 50 cents. And then I got... Um, this one, I got it for, how much was this? I think it was a hundred shillings. That's like a dollar fifty cents or something like that. And then, this one, I got it for three hundred, no, one hundred, one hundred and fifty shillings. Which is also about a dollar to two dollars of this one. Uh, what else do I have to show you guys? Uh, this one here... Is my favorite bread I used to have a lot of this when I was young so this one we got it for 50 shillings too so I also got this one for um, 50 shillings less than a dollar and I got like, <laughs> I got like three of them and then this one here is a hundred right so this is amazing this bread is amazing it's called uh, Super Loaf. I got this for 100 shillings. So a dollar, a dollar and 20 cents or something like that. And then we got a bag of rice for 500 shillings. So that's about six dollars, six, seven dollars. And then we got some eggs. This one's my niece got them. I don't know how much she got them for, but we have some eggs there. And then of course fish. So we have here six pieces of fish for, how much did this one go for? 350 shillings is about three dollars for each but we, uh, normally in canada we buy them for like nine dollars but i got them for three dollars each and that's pretty much it that's pretty much it anyway guys so most of these things that i showed you are like village prices normally if you go to the city it's a little bit more expensive especially the fish the fish is like double the price of one fish here in the city same thing for the bread and all that good stuff and my grandson and my grandma my grandson just brought me a whole sugar can taller than me and i have a bunch of them underneath the table but this one we don't need to buy we have them in the farm and uh, things like kale um a lot of things i'll show you guys but we have most of this in the farm we don't have to buy them so this one I, if i was to sell it to you i don't know maybe a hundred dollars but yeah so this one just comes straight from the farm from the farm so anyway guys, that's pretty much it. If you're trying to come and visit me in my village, I can feed you. 
very very well one thing though is my nails cannot function in the village so i had to take them out they look anyhow this one didn't come out so the reason why i took them out let me show you the pots in the village are like this and my nails are very bright so every time i do that um they get dirty so if i do that that's how your hands are most of the times when you're cooking so there's no point of coming with fancy fancy nails to the village because it's not gonna work uh, fancy fancy dressing will not work because if this touches your dress especially if it's a bright color you're gonna have to wash it but um yeah talking of washing i also got this one for washing clothes it's like it's like the sunlight detergent but this is it smells good and it's better i would say when it comes to washing a large amount of laundry so now that i'm done talking i'm gonna go to the kitchen and cook anyway hey 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 down Kanga fish na mboga. Wow. Mimi ndakanga sukuma na So guys, I'm just going to be letting the uh, the onions and the tomatoes cook down and then I'm going to go ahead and add uh, the kale which after finishing we're going to make ugali and then uh, I dinner will be ready to be served with a fish on the side and yeah that's pretty much it it was a very short uh, cooking vlog and i just wanted you guys to see the experience in the village so uh to not miss on next of my more more videos to come please uh make sure you press the, the subscribe button i always have problems saying that make sure you press the subscribe button and also don't forget to turn on your notification bell so each time i post you'll be among my notification gang and until next time guys stay safe and uh watch out for my next video i'll see you guys later i love you